Hi guys, Scott here with the Lima Bean with another technical fabrication episode where today I'll be beginning to install an electric shift mechanism for these Honda outboards. So the first thing I needed to do here was to find out exactly how much force it was going to take to do the shifting. And so through science and my handy dandy telltale luggage scale. Let's find out. Now going into reverse takes the most force because that's where you're working against the spring in a lower unit. And we get about 17, 18 pounds. Not much, but really more than I would trust to uh, one of the RC servos. Even though you can get some pretty big ones. And I looked at uh, linear actuators for a long time and was really set on uh, uh, some from Canada that looked really nice and I'm sure they would do the job just fine. Not expensive either. But uh, the main thing about those is, see we have three positions here we're trying to move to. The, the neutral has to be there so it's not just from point A to point B. It has to stop in the middle going both ways. And they have systems that uh, use a feedback potentiometer that's built into the actuator and through a microprocessor can put it wherever you want it and that looked like they had you know a, a pretty simple system to do that with and it wasn't going to be expensive but um i'm kind of an analog guy when it comes to critical systems and i know even uh you know the big jets in the air are all everything's flying on microprocessors too but uh, I, I really wanted to find a kind of a simple analog system um, that didn't need to boot up. And so, after some more digging online, I found these. These are Honda Goldwing reverse actuators. So, I'm kind of keeping it in the family. And it's a pretty simple device. And this is basically like an automotive power window motor. And I'm certain that this portion with the motor is exactly what that is. It's a Honda power window motor that's been in millions of Honda cars for decades. So it's a worm gear drive, which is a pretty significant uh, reduction that uh, is not able to backfeed. That, that is, uh, you can't apply force really uh, at the output and reverse the motor. And this one here, uh, I think I paid $11 for, um, I think 12 or 13 shipped to the door. Why $11? Yeah, it's used. But um, the real reason is that there's no market for this. Why is there no market for it? Because they never go bad. I started working in a uh, Honda motorcycle shop back in the early 80s, and I was amazed at how the technology of the engines and uh, electrical systems were light years ahead of uh, what I'd been used to working on American iron automobiles. So it was a real eye opener. And nearly all of this uh, Japanese made stuff is super dependable and durable and reliable yeah so that whole experience got me pretty hooked on Japanese motorcycles and don't get me wrong guys I'm all about being American buying American but come on America 
why not still to this day can we not produce a four-cylinder motorcycle much less six-cylinder and so the best we've got is this over a century old tractor engine that sounds like fat man flatulence going down the road and shaking the fillings out of your head why America why what it comes down to is I trust these and I came up with like 117 different ways to mount this on here uh, I thought about replacing this top cover here with like an external uh, pod where this could sit in and uh, it could also go on the side here where the uh, the shifter goes for uh, tiller steering models so it would, would both work fine so I finally settled on this location here nice and tidy inside the cover uh, I did have to remove the front portion of what Honda calls the muffler it's basically the uh, air intake screen and this little front piece just just really isn't necessary and besides uh, they call this the muffler which is a little confusing when you're looking up parts but that's what it does it muffles the intake noise and quite frankly it could use a little more noise so maybe I can hear them back here so no big loss and I have my uh, my lever with the right distance from the center so the limits of the travel of this actuator match the limits of travel of the uh, gear shifting mechanism so it can't go too far and all I need to do now is get it set up to stop in the middle for neutral and so I got these micro switches which I'm going to mount here uh, one for controlling neutral so it will it will run off the top uh, of this this extra piece I left out here and I don't know if I need this that long but uh, I'm gonna start there and then I'm gonna have one uh, mounted down here to uh, just stop the current to the motor when it goes into uh, reverse gear it already has uh, a switch built in for forward so I can wire in through that and run them all through relays. So here's my uh, linkage setup and I finally found these. They're called shoulder tab high bolts. Very nice. Not cheap. These were like 10 bucks a piece, stainless. But uh, the hole's big enough that I could actually put a sleeve on top of this all thread to keep it from scraping against the all thread. It was bugging me. And so it only needs a spring in, uh, in the reverse direction uh, in case going into reverse, if the motor wasn't running, for example, it wouldn't go in the gear maybe it might uh, the gear dogs might butt together and then you're gonna bend something or break something so it needed this spring relief just in case of that
Now I'm going to reverse the polarity to the motor and send it back the other way. So just this uh, hex here on the spacer is enough to pretty accurately uh, trip this micro switch. Now it does have a little momentum to it, so I'm going to have to set this where it's turning the, the motor off both directions just a little bit before I need it to stop. But I think I will come out here maybe halfway and make a ramp for the micro switch. Uh, the further away from center it is, the more accurate you can be with it. I don't think it's necessary, but uh, it can't hurt. So thanks again everyone for watching. I'll have part two of this series coming up pretty soon. And uh, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. Don't cost nothing.